Hi everyone, welcome back to Slip Twip Knit. My name is Shelby, and I come to you from Shelby Township, Michigan, which is where I do my knitting. If you're new here, welcome, and thank you for giving me a chance. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to make up for any mistakes I have made in my last however many episodes. Um, first dumb. So for those of you who are new, and I say this in almost every episode, and eventually I may not. My name is Shelby. I'm from Shelby Township, Michigan. Um, local nickname for Shelby Township is Shelby Twip or The Twip. So I'm Shelby from The Twip on most of my social media and I wanted to incorporate that Twip element into the name of my podcast, which is how I came up with Slip Twip Knit. It's a mashup of Shelby Twip as well as the knitting decrease stitch Slip Slip Knit. So Again, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate it. This is going to be a short episode. I've had only short episodes lately, and I feel bad about it, but I'm I'm only working on like one thing at a time. So this is this is good. I uh, this I'm hoping that this added concentration on one project at a time is going to help me knock out some projects in 2021. As you may know, this year being this year being a new year and at the end of 2020 i decided i was not knitting any socks at all this year um and that actually has been kind of hard because i keep seeing some very pretty socks on instagram thank you so anyway it's been it's been quite hard but i didn't knit anything but socks in 2020 and i want to focus on other things I want to make this year just because I know that socks are my comfort zone and if I have a pair of socks on the needles that's all I'm going to work on. So I'm just trying to eliminate the socks temporarily only for a year. In 2022 I will knit as many socks as my heart wants but right now I am trying to focus on other projects and so I have a whole a whole list of things I want to work on including a make nine and actually now that I'm thinking of it I should run through that with you guys um, just to kind of add some stuff here um, or maybe I won't do it now maybe I'll do it at the end of the episode because I do have one whip on the needles right now and if you are a returning viewer you will recognize this I am I recast on something that I had previously ripped out and this is my Deseki cowl. This is a cowl pattern by Thea Coleman, also known as Baby Cocktails. And I, so this is kind of uh, an homage to 2020, which is really a nice way to ring in 2021 is paying an homage to last year. During lockdown, at the beginning of lockdown, at the very least, I drank a lot of Deseki. That's one of that, that is a beer I drink normally, but, um, we had, we had a, a lot of it in our fridge at the beginning of quarantine and I slowly made it my way through through that whole case of Dasecki, but I knew because the Coleman had a cowl pattern called Dasecki, I wanted to do it and I also wanted to do it in a green yarn because the Dasecki bottle is green. Or the very, at the very least, the Dasecki lager bottle is green. It's not the same green, but it is green. So here, I mean, there's not a whole lot here. I'm probably eight or so rows in, but that's what it looks like so far. This cowl is, I thought when I started it last year, I thought it was going to be a challenge. Um, but I also, I don't know if you real, um, up until last year, I had a love-hate relationship with cables. And I really do love cables now. And I was excited to cast this on because I did really like cables at the time. Um, but if you are a returning viewer, you may remember that I wasn't happy with the size of, of the cowl when I was working on it. I was working on it on a size 5 US needle. The, um, the pattern does call for a size 7, but my gauge does tend to be on the looser side. So I sized two needles down, um, but I wasn't happy with the size of it and I don't want to go all the way up to a seven because 
Um, I'm sure this is going to block out some too, but I'm working on it on a six right now. The yarn I'm using is Barocco Ultra Alpaca in the color Peat Mix, and it's just a really nice green. I love green. Green is one of my favorite colors that I can wear, that I do wear. And I don't know. Like I said, it's not, I mean, there's, there's really nothing here to remark on, but I'm excited to keep working on this and I'm going to keep working on it. And it's really nice too this time because I have an iPad now and I can keep my knitting pattern on my iPad rather than resting my laptop on my lap the whole time I'm knitting or trying to look up the pattern on my phone and having to zoom way in. So I'm hoping that this will be a very um, pleasant and I mean and it was a pleasant it was a pleasant pattern to knit on last time I just wasn't happy with the size but hopefully this time having having access to an iPad which is very lightweight and portable and also a decent size it's not gonna be a pain in the you know what um, to be looking at the pattern. So that's where I'm at with this and this is currently my only project um, but that um, but that being said, this is also a project on my Make 9 for 2021. And I'm going to move over a little bit so future Shelby can add some text here. But I do have a Make 9 for this year, and I, I'm trying to remember it offhand. So I'm going to be fudging it, but you know what, that's fine. If something that's not on my Make 9 gets onto the Make 9, I guess I'm just adding something. And I will correct in a future episode. So first things first, I'm going to make nine for this year. Um, we have the Desecchi cowl, which I just talked about. This is a cowl by uh, Thea Coleman. And I think anybody who is familiar with Thea Coleman, you see she, she's, she is a cable queen. She is so, I just, I love her pattern. She just put one out this week called Claret and when she had put preview the the sweater for testing I, when I saw it I was like I need that um so I haven't bought the pattern yet but I probably will just because um but anyway Dia Coleman she is so good at cables and like I said the Desecchi from the moment I saw it I knew I needed I knew I needed to knit it because Desecchi is my is my beverage of choice um, and also I drank quite a bit of Desecchi in 2020. So that is, I'm going to say that's number one on my, on my Make 9. Number two on my Make 9 is the Farmhouse Cardigan by Amy Christoffers. And I have this on my, on, on my Make 9 as well because this was a cardigan I started, I started it in, 2019 and then I never got past the pocket linings and one sleeve so I need to finish that I don't want it sitting around taking up space but also again this was a pattern and I think this was probably I think I saw it almost one of the first times I had been back on Ravelry since the old days I went on I was on Ravelry back in high school and then everything happened in college and I went I mean I don't I mean college happened and I stopped knitting for a long time and then at some point I got back up on Ravelry in 2018 and so anyway this was one of the first pictures of a cardigan I saw on Ravelry and I don't think there's anything I can do that will accurately convey how big of hard eyes I gave the picture of this sweater it's just it's a beautiful sweater um, and it's textured and so I'm just, I, it took a long time for me to pick the yarn for this sweater. Um, I did end up picking a yarn from Knit Picks and that is what I have and still plan to use when I make it my, for myself. Um, but I'm just, like I said, I just, I all, I just wanted to work on other things, uh, primarily socks when I was working on it. So that it, it took a back seat and it's got a, it, I'm not working on any socks in 2021, so you know it's a good time to resume that project, is what I'm saying. Number three on my Make Nine for 
2021 is the um the friday slipover by petite knit it's a textured uh sweater vest i already have my colors picked out for it but it's just it's another textured sweater vest and it actually looks like this texture is probably going to be very similar to um that of the farmhouse cardigan now that being um part of why i picked a sweater vest is because i definitely am I'm a little bit sleeve averse like many knitters so bearing in mind that I maybe my problem with knitting sweaters is the sleeves I thought why don't I knit a sweater without sleeves aka a sweater vest and the Friday slip over to me just it it appeals because it has that texture element to it that I really like um, so that's what that is what I'm I have that's another thing I have on my make nine and I do have colors picked out for it and I do currently have some yarn for it um, but that being said it is a, a pattern that you have to hold double with mohair and I don't have any mohair for it yet and also just trying to focus on one thing at a time so have yarn ish will knit on the Friday slipover another item on my make nine for this year um, also by petite knit is the no frill sweater now i know that the no frill sweater was very controversial for a while and may still be um but this was a pattern this was another pattern that i saw um early on in my ravelry days and i just love the simplicity of it and this is another one i have the pattern and I also have yarn for it. I bought the yarn for it at the Ann Arbor Fiber Fair back in 2019 um, from Lady Men Fiber Arts. And that is the yarn I have specifically designated for this project. And I also have mohair to hold double for that one. So that's also on my make nine. It's just a very simple sweater. Um, I know that there are a lot of simple sweaters out there and I would and I am open to knitting more. But because this is something I have wanted to make for a while, I, um, and I have the yarn for it. I'm going to see it through. What's that? Four? Five is the Santa Fe by Isabel Kramer. This is another pattern, and this isn't a pattern that I saw on Ravelry right away, and it's not one that I wanted to knit right away. Um, but at one point, I started paying attention to the things that Isabel Kramer was putting out. Um, at some point, I started, and... I was going through her her catalog of patterns one day and I saw this shrug and it, it's a shrug but it has lace elements and it, it just it looks so nice. So that was another thing that was another pattern I bought almost as soon as I saw it but this is another problem with me for sweaters I never know actually for most knitting projects I never know what color I'm looking for until I find it you know I'm not gonna just for me I am very particular about the way I want something to look now that being said I knew I wanted to knit the Santa Fe and I went through a lot of colors I wanted to do it I think it would I think it would look stunning in brown I think it would look really stunning in blue I was looking at a like a like a powdery blue color for it at one point um, I think it would look amazing in pink but I also, pink's not a color, I, I, I don't think I look very good in pink. So I eventually did find a color and it's a green, which was not previously on the table. Um, but I do have a green color for it and I have yarn. Um, I can't remember if I need four or five skeins of yarn for this, um, for this particular project. But I do have four skeins and if I need a fifth, I know where to get, I know where to get it. So... That is on my Make 9 for this year as well. And I saw something about maybe a make-along in March that is focused on the color green. So that might be when I start working on it. I haven't decided. Also, a shrug might be a good idea for spring. So who knows? So I have five out of nine, and I definitely picked out nine. Number six, the Bandana Cowl by... Pearl Soho and I wanted to put this on my list because I wanted to have something that would be relatively simple and quick on my Make 9 too because I do have some pretty ambitious projects on it 
this uh this the bandana cowl is by pearl soho and i on ravelry the pattern is in italian and that doesn't work for me because i don't speak italian but I do know that you can get the pattern in English on the Pearl Soho blog. So that's ultimately what I'm going to end up doing. And I do have yarn for this. I have a um, a yarn from um, Lolo Did It's Downton Abbey Yarn Club. And so that's what I'm going to end up doing. This is a bulky weight um, project, so I'm just going to have to hold the yarn like triple while I'm working on it. And I officially cannot remember anything else on my Make 9, so I made it through 6. I'm gonna go look at what I wrote down for the other three. I'll be right back. I found it. So thankfully I write stuff down because sometimes I need to and I put it, I put my make nine in my planner for this year along with the rest of my goals. So anyway, I remembered, I, w I, I did remember, I haven't added anything extra in yet. Um, so going ahead and kind of getting back into my my make nine starting with seven seven i'm gonna say is the oh, well i'm not gonna say i have it written down again um but the um number seven is the felix cardigan uh which is by amy christoffers again savory knitting uh so my friend kelly from miss kel's crafty podcast wants to do the felix pullover and i I don't, I'm not against pullovers. I just, I like cardigans a little more, I think. And I also think I need more cardigans in my wardrobe. So that's why I kind of picked the Felix cardigan. That being said, I, I also have yarn for this project specifically. I bought a sweater quantity specifically for this project once I decided I was going to do it because when I saw this yarn, it told me it wanted to be a Felix cardigan, so then I had to buy it. Um, and the yarn I bought is from Dragon Horde and it, Dragon Horde, and it is in her. It's on her BFL base, and it's which is a worsted base, and it is in the color Fox Demon. This was a color she released over the over the fall, and I had such a hard time getting my hands on this yarn on a sweater quantity and I remember I emailed her a couple times to say oh hey do you know one I know that because you know with COVID suppliers for for yarn dyers they were having a hard time getting their hands on wool apparently but anyway I remember emailing her and saying I know that it's hard to get your hands on on wool sometimes um do you do you think that you'll be getting your your BFL basin soon um and will you be dying up more fox demons? So it took it took a little bit of an exchange of emails, but excitingly, I did get my hands on an order of the fox demon in the BFL base. So that is what's going to be my Felix cardigan um, when I get around to it. So that's that's happy, and I'm wondering because I'm working on a I, I I have plans for a cardigan another cardigan by the same designer um and I've even started that cardigan but you know it took a back seat so regardless I'm wondering if the construction of the Felix cardigan is going to be very similar to the construction of the farmhouse cardigan so I haven't read the pattern yet so maybe I should do that but we'll see and hopefully I'm going to be working on that, I think, because the fox demon is such a pretty color. And something's in my eye. I'm sorry. My If my right eye is being funny in this video, it's because I think I have an eyelash poking me. Um, and it's not very fun. But anyway, that, that, uh, that fox demon is such a pretty fall color. I just... I'm hoping I can work on it. This I can work on the cardigan this summer and have it ready for fall because it would be perfect for fall. Last two of my make nine for 2021. Number eight, the Boston Streets hat by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I've never knit a pattern by Hohi before, but I love the way the Boston Streets hat looks. I think it's very pretty. I like the brim. It's got some cable-y looking stuff going on. I don't have the pattern, so I don't actually know what's going on with it. 
but um, I know I, I've never knit a pattern by Hohe and I know I would like to knit a pattern by her eventually and because I have so many ambitious projects on my plate for this year I thought I should stick with maybe something a little smaller um, for some of my for some of my projects so that's where the Boston Streets hat is coming from also I do sincerely want to knit it but anyway I think I have a yarn picked out for it I don't have the yarn and I don't have the pattern so it might be a little hard to tell and I might not make any sense and I might, and I might change my mind as far as the yarn goes but I know that this is something I, I do want to work on um, and you never know if it's something that I really enjoy making I might make more than one I might it might be a Christmas gift for people I don't know the answer to this and then finally of my make nine for 2021 the last thing I want to work on well not I don't I mean chronologically I don't know but number number nine on my make nine for the year is called the Royal Oak Cowl and I don't remember who the designer is and I didn't write it down but this is a pattern that is it's free on Ravelry from what I recall and it was designed specifically for Blue Sky Fibers um, for their 150 gram skein um, of wool stock. So I'm really excited to work on that. I bought the yarn for it already. I went to Royal Oak, Michigan, which is, I believe, where what the the town the cable is the the town the cowl is named for. Um, so I went to Unique Knits in Royal Oak and I bought my I bought my yarn there for it. I went with my aunt and that's where I bought it when I went with my aunt. I'm really excited to do it. It's, it's you know, it's just a, it's a regular, it's a regular everyday cowl it looks like. So I'm hoping that it does have design elements I like. So we're gonna, we're gonna see. I am excited to work on it though. So that's my make nine for the year and thank you for listening as long as I've been rambling on about my make nine for the year. Um, so you'll be seeing me again here soon. Now I do have to sign off because I'm recording this on my lunch break and I only have about 15 minutes left. So that being said, thank you for taking the time to watch and um, let me know if you have a make nine for this year or anything that you're looking forward to making, comment down below and let me, um, and tell me what, what is something that you particularly are looking forward to making this year. And thank you again for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you again for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. And thank you. Um, and have a nice day. Thanks. Happy knitting.